<clears throat> Hello boys and girls. Alright, so I've basically recently started streaming and one of my uh, sub goals was to create a slipper guide. Sorry for any sound in the background by the way, it's hot as fuck outside and I got the window open shit like that. Okay, so we're gonna start today with this trapper guide, there's gonna be like a holosmith guide coming for like nades and there's gonna be a core energy guide coming but yeah let's get fucking started um i got no script by the way so it's pretty much all freestyle but yeah for this build we're gonna go for demolish amulet why demolish amulet why not something that's more dps orientated um scrapper is not a heavily DPS oriented spec to begin with. Obviously, obviously you, do, you, can, uh, you can trade for it so that it's like more uh, DPS oriented, but that doesn't really fit its purpose. Um, we're going f more for a like duelist and team fighter style. Like we want to be able to hold uh, hold some outnumbered situations and um, win our duels convincingly without being too exposed to like one versus ones, uh, one versus twos, when we get plus one pretty much. So we want to be on a safe side. And that's what we're gonna go for the one to pretty much. And then we're gonna choose resistance room, which is pretty much just an all roller. Like it gives a toughness, it gives minus condi duration, and you get resistance from activating your heal, uh, your elite skill, which is pretty much your mortar skill. I'm gonna explain that later though. Um, we don't really have that much Kondi Cleanse on this build, and that's why the resistance comes in very, very key. And getting resistance up before we actually heal to prevent the poison from affecting our healing is also pretty good. So yeah, for weapons, we're obviously going for the hammer. That's pretty much the main weapon of a scrapper. Then we're going for absorption sigil. Um, this is pretty much the best choice for a sigil you could pick because we have so many interrupts on this build and that it's actually a lot of value. This would be an interrupt. Hammer 3 um, days is like two times. Which would be interrupts as well. If the enemy is casting something, the function there was an interrupt as well. If we dodge, we get explosive entrance from the uh, from one of the trade lines. I'm gonna explain it later. And if we hit someone above like 90% HP, we're gonna interrupt them as well, or like place them, and if they cast something, they get interrupted. So yeah, we have a lot of chances to actually steal boons from enemies. Um, if we're up against like a Condi Ref, for example, this would steal their resistance, almost always. Because there's like boon priority, pretty much. But yeah, um, and then we have Energy Sigil which gives us like 25% endurance on weapon swap. How do we weapon swap as a scrapper who can only get one weapon? We proc the sigil by going into elixir gun, um, swapping into mortar kit. Those pretty much change your 1 to 5 skills and those count as weapon swaps. So yeah, and that's pretty much it for the gear. Um, we're gonna go to your build now. Obviously, there are some variations. Let me just go back real quick. If we know that the enemy team is running full power comp without condis, pretty much, or like a condi dominant uh, build, then we can go for Doliac rune as well, because this is pretty much the most tanky um, rune in the game. It gives you lots of fucking uh, toughness. And you regenerate health every second. It's not that much, but it actually contributes to your resustain quite a bit. And yeah, also you gain vitality, so that's kind of good. But um, that only applies if uh, the enemy team really doesn't run any condis. Yeah. And let's go for the build. As I said, there are some variations that I prefer that other people uh, don't play. But I'm gonna try to cover the other traits as well to like give you more of an info. Um, I'm gonna give you a full insight on the minor traits as well, 
because some people might not understand them or like might not understand the interactions between them. Okay, alchemy is pretty easy though. We have like a hidden elixir B. We trigger this pretty much whenever we are hit below 75% uh, HP. Every 24 seconds it's gonna give us like fury, might, retaliation, swiftness and more might. Yeah, easy to understand. And then we got protection injection. We gain protection on a 30 second um, ICD whenever we are disabled. Um, yeah. Pretty good trait. We want to be defensive when we get bursted, or like when we get CC'd. We're pretty much getting this as a backup. You could run invigorating speed because um, every 24 seconds, for example, you get like swiftness from this. So it would give you bigger. Other than that, we don't really have a consistent way of um, getting swiftness onto us. Like Elixir Gun 2 would give us swiftness if the glob actually bounces back to us but um, yeah, that doesn't really happen that often um, so it's not really worth it to use this trait and protection on like cc when you get cc'd is much much more valuable um, and then we have lesser elixir c it's pretty much whenever we reach like um, a condition threshold of like two every 80 seconds we're gonna Trans, uh, we're gonna convert these two condition, uh, these two conditions <laughs> into uh, boons a bit much, and we get light from that. And then we have the passive elixir, elixir E. When we are struck below um, thirty-three percent health, we get three K barrier and protection again. This trade is a no-brainer. Like it's just a passive trade that is insanely good when we get pressured that we automatically gain resustain or like even stuff to save us. Then we have compounding chemicals. Um, heal yourself when you get yourself a boon. Get increased concentration. Okay, I think everyone can understand that as well. Healing us whenever we get a boon is insane. Like, just look at the amount of boons that we get from uh, Every, everything that we have pretty much gives wounds. Like, we gain regeneration, we gain might every time we cast like an uh, elixir. That means all of the time when a boon is applied, we're gonna heal ourselves for like 33, uh, 37 health. That's good. And then we have HGH in this trailer. Um, pretty much reduces our elixir, um, elixir cooldowns and gives us might as well. Yeah, nothing really to say. It reduces the cooldown from the passives as well. And yeah, from the elixir U as well. And it also decreases the cooldowns from Super Elixir, Elixir Gun 5, Elixir Gun 4, and Mortar 5. So yeah, let's move on to explosives. Um, explosive entrance. We pretty much. Um, I'm just gonna reach it out. Your first attack when entering combat um, explodes, dealing damage to nearby foes. This ability refreshes after a dodge roll. Um, yeah, I think whenever we get out of combat, it reapplies as well. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Making a guide out here, and I don't even know if that's correct, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, it's pretty much. Insane. We get this buff, we hit someone, and we get us free damage. We dodge, we get this buff again, free damage. And we can enhance this uh, trade later on. I'm gonna show you that. Um, the first trade that we pick here is short fuse. Gain fury when you hit a fall with an expl uh, explosion. Yeah, no brainer. We get 4 seconds of uh, fury on a 3 second ICD whenever we hit someone with an explosion. Explosive entrance counts as an uh, explosion, for example. Our hammer 2 counts as an explosion. Our mortar shots are explosions. So we pretty much just get free permanent um, fury of 10. You can see why it's broken. <laughs> um, explosions cause vulnerability. Each time you hit someone with an explosion, you give them vulnerability. 
That's uh, a big brain. Then we go for Blast Shield. Explosive Entrance grants Barrier. Gain Vitality based on a percentage of the power. Yeah, we got some decent power by choosing a power dominant uh, yeah, amulet. So we get quite the HP boost. Um, let me actually show you what this would be looking like if we didn't have that. Get you out of combat. Okay. We would be sitting at 14k HP, and that's pretty fucking low. So we pretty much have to run this trade to get like more vitality. And it pretty much enhances our explosive entrance as well. And we get uh, 340 or something. Yeah, 340 barrier each time we hit someone with explosive entrance. Pretty good as well. Um, shape charge. Deal more damage for each, uh, each stack of vulnerability on the, uh, on the target. No. Who the fuck cares? Moving on to flashbang. Now this is um, the point where we can could swap traits. But I personally just prefer flashbang because it's insanely broken. Explosive entrance inflicts blindness when it hits. Additionally, it dazes foes over the um, health threshold. The health threshold is like 90%. This golem is 100% health. We have explosive entrance up. We hit him. And he would get dazed, pretty much. And um, yeah, that's just insane. Just by dodging, we get explosive entrance. We gain barrier when hitting someone. We give them blindness and we daze them if they're above 90% health. For example, if someone is in a down state and you see someone, uh, the ally from the enemy team is uh, coming in, he wants to glyph. The ally is above 90% uh, HP though. You could go for a mortar shot and daze the ally coming in with this and interrupt the glyph for example. So that's just insane. Um, why do I run flashbang over Big Boomer though? Like Big Boomer is definitely good as well. Like you get 10% um, damage increase when your health is um, above the health from the enemies, and you also get some resustain from Big Boomer. But if you get plus one, and um, you're pretty much dodging and hitting someone, then they get blinded. Like versus power refs versus. Even Nate Solo versus Power Thief, it's insanely, insanely good. And yeah, that's why I'm running Flashbang over Big Boomer. You could run this, like people ran this in the past, but I just prefer Flashbang. Moving on to the last, um, to the last trade line, the Scrapper, obviously. What makes Scrapper different from Hollow Smith or Core Engine? We pretty much gain access to the function gyro. This is our class mechanic on the F5, pretty much. Um, let's just read this out. You gain access to the function gyro, which replaces your F5, blah 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 blah. A function gyro. Create a lightning field at the specific point, or a specified point, I can't fucking read. Then summon gyros to finish foes and revive allies within the field. The recharge of the skill is increased for each gyro created beyond the first. Interrupted gyros are destroyed. So, pretty much. If there would be a downed guy here, and an ally of mine um, in the down uh, the downside as well, I would cast the gyro, it would spawn one gyro to stomp the enemy, and one to res my um, teammate, pretty much. That's obviously depending on if someone of your team is down, Wherever you, uh, wherever you are casting it, you know, or if it's uh, with the purpose to stop someone. And yeah, for each gyro that's spawned, it increases the cooldown. It's self-explanatory, I guess. But yeah, um, then we move on to the next trait, System Shocker, disabling a foe against a barrier. A function gyro dazes foes when cast. Um, yeah. You gain barrier when uh, CCing someone. That is obviously insanely good. Let me get out of combat here and point to the golems. Okay, okay, okay. Now we are back. Um, pretty much what I just said is um, 
A system shocker gets us a barrier whenever we CC someone. And that comes in super handy because we got a lot of CCs. Just look at my barrier. I cast nothing but yeah. The Thunderclap which stuns uh, foes hit like up to five targets. And we go for a rocket charge in that and we gain so much uh, barrier from that. We can just interrupt people with our function gyro. We get 2.5k barrier. Thunderclap, fix get barrier. Rocket charge in lightning field, days more people, more barrier. You can see why this is busted and why people run this trade. Um, no. Next trade, I guess. Using a heal skill grants super speed and a radius around you. Using a heal skill's associated um, tool belt skill grants you personal super speed. Yeah, this is actually insane as well. If we're in a teamfight scenario, we want to help out our people. Go for the healing turret here. You get, uh, get li 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 <laughs> you get this small uh, radius of like 240, where you give your teammates five seconds of super speed around you. And that's yeah, insane to help people out um, to reposition themselves. The next thing would be the tool belt skill. We pop this, we get seven seconds of super speed just to move around for personal use. It's insane. For minor trade, that is insane. Yeah, next trade. Expert examination. Stunning or dazing a foe applies vulnerability and weakness to them. Obviously, this one is super super good. Especially versus power enemies. We're just gonna stun them or daze them and they get 3 seconds of weakness. Um, obviously Thunderclap has a huge fucking animation. We can instead go for the function arrow which dazes people and give them uh, weakness as well. Like, give one of the force weakness as well. Or they all get affected and I guess I didn't... Uh, it's not right now, but yeah. You see that this trade is insane. You could go for objective motion, which gives like flat um, damage bonus, but applying weakness to enemies so they can't um, regenerate their dodges as fast and they don't do as much damage because of how weakness is designed. It's insane. Also gives uh, vulnerability, which is like 5% damage increase for uh, quality damage and um, incoming damage for them. Pretty much boosting our team as well if someone is playing um, damage or like Condi damage, they profit from us um, inflicting vulnerability on the enemies. So it's just much superior than object emotion in my point of view. Um, impact 7. A percentage of the strike damage you deal is converted into barrier. Your vitality is reduced. Pretty much reduces our vitality by one, uh, minus 180. But for just auto attacking doing damage, we get barrier. You see these um, little blue numbers, and we just get barrier from hitting people. Obviously, we're hitting lots of uh, golems right now, so we get more barrier. But yeah, it's super good for minor threat as well. Now we come to the interesting part, where most people don't um, agree with me. I'm always going for kinetic stabilizers. Gain stability and super speed when disabling an enemy. Outgoing stun and daze duration is increased. So what this means, if we pretty much yeah, CC someone, we um, get super speed. And that's insane, because um, scrapper auto attacks are pretty important on the hammer, but hitting a foe which is kiting away from you isn't the easiest thing in combat. So, if you get super speed, you can chase them pretty easily. And um, even if you get plus one, you can go for a quick daze on someone, get super speed, kite away. And that's pretty much more value for me than going with adaptive armor. Adaptive armor um, increases the strength of your barrier that you get, reduce, uh, reduces incoming condition damage as well while you have barrier. 
Obviously the uh, barrier is increased by 15% and condition damage is reduced by 20%. It's insane. You could go for this trade as well. But um, since the meta is not really as much Condi dominant at the moment, I don't really personally see the usage over being more tanky than being more mobile. More mobile will mean that you can kite away from damage and don't even get hit by the damage. So you don't really need the more barrier. But yeah, that's pretty much my point of view. There's other builds around that uh, 55 played in the monthly, for example, that utilizes this trade. Yeah, I can't really talk too much about it, why they would go for that, but I just prefer uh, kinetic stabilizers. It's also pretty good that you get fucking stability by just CCing people. Like, CCing five people gets me five stacks of stability. It's insanely busted. In a team fight, this will help you out so much because, um, yeah, it helps. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we talked about all the trades now. Now we can go for the heal skill, utility skills, and lead skill. Why do we run um, healing turret? We're pretty much uh, lacking Kondi cleanse, so we need some kind of Kondi cleanse. Healing turret gives us Kondi cleanse. And it also supports our teammates, like the heal is insane. We get a um, water field that our teammates can blast as well. And we get um, a water field on the uh, tool belt, which we can blast as well. It's yeah, insane in my opinion. You could be running Elixir Age, which gives you like um, protection for example, and it's a lower, he uh, lower cooldown than healing shirt, but it's pretty... Uh, how would I put it? Pretty egoistic in my opinion. If your whole build is designed for like only holding out until your team comes, you could be running this. But if you're going for more of a team fight uh, type of gameplay that I'm doing, then healing turret is much, much better. Um, yeah, and then we go for elixir gun. And this will be a long one. <laughs> elixir gun is pretty much our first kit. Through Elixir Gun, we gain access to new 1 to 5 skills. The number one skill is Tranquilizer Dart. Pretty much just good damage on range. Um, that inflicts bleeding on the foes and weakness. We can just send this on someone and prevent them from doing big, uh, big damage because they get weakness on themselves. Like, putting this on a Hollow would be insane, so he doesn't do as much damage on a Power Riff. On a warrior, on a thief, you know, or like a Reaper, for example. It's pretty good. Glob cut. Um, fire a bouncing blob that uh, glob that cripples foes and grants swiftness to you and your allies. The swiftness is only applied though when it bounces. Like you can see when I shoot it, it comes kind of not even back to me because it bounces between the uh, enemies. But um, if I would shoot a single uh, target. It pretty much bounces back to me and then to this guy and then back to this guy. It's actually insane damage. So many people under um, value this. But yeah, can be quite good. Um, then we have Fumigate. Super undervalued as well. It's pretty much giving out uh, vulnerability and poison. And we can cleanse our teammates. If this guy would be Conny bombed, for example, we just go for the Fumigate and cleanse his conditions. It's insane. Or if someone is about, like, the enemy is about to heal, we cast Fumigate, give him vulnerability and uh, poison, and yeah, they can't heal as effectively. So if you can time this before they heal, then their healing will be much uh, yeah, decreased by 33%. That's what poison does. <laughs> um, and then we have Acid Bomb. Acid Bomb is insane. Um, how can I showcase this in the best? Okay, just imagine this is the node, would be kind of this size. You put this in the middle of the node and it's ticking damage. Like you see this kind of goo popping up and it's damaging him all the time. It doesn't even have like um, an AOE indicator for the enemy to see. So yeah, if they stand inside it, they just get ticking damage, which is pretty much covering most of the node. So always try to put this in the middle of the node, so they can't really 
position themselves in a way where they don't tank it. Um, it's also a blast finisher. It's also unblockable. You can also use this to gain distance from your enemies or like to do some jumps as seen in like some of my kiting videos. I'm gonna show you that later in the gameplay though. Um, then we have a super elixir. Launch an elixir orb, healing allies on impact and creating an area of continual healing. Pretty much does like 700 healing on impact and the pulse healing is um, 163. And it removes one condition. For 5 allies, 13 pulses, 13 times 163. It's insane. It's also a light combo finisher. So we don't really have quantity um, cleanse. If we blast the light field, we get area quantity cleanse for our teammates and us. It's insane. The tool belt is um, a stun break on a 28 second cooldown. It doesn't really do too much. It gives us um, might, it gives us region, stuns. Uh, them. How do I say it? Yeah. It breaks our stun. <laughs> and there we go. Um, yeah. Next one is Elixir U. And this spot is kind of contested. I love Elixir U, I love using it because it gives me like mm, more fluidity in the gameplay. Drinking Elixir U gains, uh, gives you quickness, stability, and vigor. Seven and a half seconds of fucking quickness. It's insane. Two stacks of stability for like only one and a fourth second. Um, you gain vigor and you gain might. Also a stun break on a 32 second cooldown. It's insane. For a side noter, you pretty much... You need two stun breaks. It doesn't really work if you go for one stun break. Because versus any coordinated team, you will just get perma CC'd or like CC chained and they will kill you. So I don't really see the point of running Elixir U and uh, Elixir R instead. Um, which many people do, or like some people do because 55 obviously did it in the monthly AT. And um, yeah, people are copying. Obviously Elixir R is insane. It gives you like full refill on your dodges, you dodge two times. And you get two more dodges. It's insane on the 24 second cooldown, don't get me wrong. Also removes immobilize. Um, the important part about this stone is that you get the uh, res elixir. You throw this down and it pretty much reses all of your allies in this area for like 17% per pulse. It's insanely busted. But then again, you only have one stun break on this build. But yeah, it's kind of up to your own what you need. There are definitely uh, situations where this carries team fights, but for pure survival um, abilities, I much prefer the Elixir U. Plus, it's more offensive as well, more versatile. The two belt from Elixir U gives like uh, super speed for you and your allies, and it breaks stun for your allies and for you as well if you can time that. Pretty much does good for like getting some movement on. When you're getting plus one, you need to kite. Just throw this on the floor, you get super speed. It's insane. And then we go for Bulwark Gyro. This spot is, I guess, the least contested because Bulwark Gyro is bust. Deploy a Bulwark Gyro to grant you barrier and redirect damage uh, to you from nearby allies. Initial personal barrier is 2.2k uh, yeah, pretty much and it pulls this barrier for 700 and it's like um, 5 seconds duration and the interval of the pulsing barrier is like 1 second so you get 5 ticks of the 700 barrier. I'm just activating this 25 second cooldown by the way, look at my barrier. It's insane. It also gives me a light field. Um, lightning field, which I could use to like combo my um, this thunder cap is a lightning field as well. By the way, I could use this to combo my rocket charge and daze people. It's insane. And that would give me barrier again because um, rocket charge in lightning field CCs people, um, dazes people, and we get barrier from that. So if your lightning field isn't put on from the thunder cap, then 
you pretty much can go for bulwark gyro or you go for a function gyro which is also a lightning field and do the same you get what i mean um yeah then we have another important part about bulwark gyro also um the damage redirection is about like 33 percent like uh, your teammates gain or like get 33 percent less damage and that damage is redirected to you so you have to be kind of careful when using that but it's super good for peeling for your teammates yeah and then we have defense field protect the defensive dome around yourself and grant stability to nearby allies this is insanely good this in a team fight you can fuck over so many people like imagine being with a reaper something that doesn't really have that much uh, stability and he can just more through a fucking uh, mo i actually don't know more he can shred through people <laughs> let's put it like that so the stability is insane or like if you want to um prevent your ellie from getting interrupted while he's casting uh, the rest for example just put this up he won't be able to get interrupted unless he gets stolen for, for example by a thief it's insane but the other good part about this if we cast the function gyro you remember those get interrupted or like those get destroyed when they are interrupted when casting them we can give them defense field or like we can activate defense field and give them stability so they can't be cc'd and don't get interrupted insane and we get quick fucking results with that i'm gonna show that later as well uh, with the gameplay though it's just so many small things that um, interact with each other that makes Scrapper so much fun to play. Now we go for Mortar Pit. You remember we chose Resistance Rune, which gives us like um, resistance each time we get the Elite skill to activate. If we just go into this, we get free resistance. No animation, no nothing. Every 20 seconds, by popping into Mortar, we get resistance. It's busted. Now this is our second kit. We get new one to five skills. Um, the mortar shot is pretty much a really really good source of continuous damage. We can just spam this whenever we have some off time, when we have CDs on our like hammer skills, when acid bomb is on cooldown. We can go for mortar auto attacks, or if someone is trying to kite us somewhere. We just shoot him with the motor because it has 1.5k range. Yeah, it's insane. It also is a physical predictor, which is like a combo finisher. If we go for the number 2, which is our poison gas shell, it pretty much poisons people. I don't have to say much about that. But um, we can actually combo this with our, uh, with our motor 1 and then apply even more poison. Because you can see, the mortar shells are affected by shooting them through the combo field. Then we have the chill field. I don't really have to say anything about that. It's like an ice combo finisher. We have the blind, which is insane by the way. Um, pulses blinds every second for 5 seconds. Super good to counter um, burst heavy classes when they plus 1 you. Counter um, lich, counter rampage. Everything pretty much counter Holosmith. But yeah, it's insane. It's so undervalued. You can even go for like res on someone, go for the uh, defense field to give your gyro step, and even put the blind field down so you, yeah, they can't even cleave the down because they are blinded almost all the time, you know. They will, they will do mu uh, much less damage. So your combo for raising someone would be Function Gyro down, maybe the uh, Flasher, and then the Defense Field immediately when you cast it your Function Gyro to get more value or like mm, get the highest chances of getting a res actually. It's the same. Then we have our Elixir Shell, which is pretty much healing. It's just taking healing. It's insane. I'm not gonna lie. 370 healing per second for 6 seconds. It's a water combo field. 
You can blast it with um, with Elixir Gun for the acid bomb. It applies like healing around you. It's insane. So yeah, that's pretty much it for like the the build, the gear, and the uh, utilities, everything. Now we're gonna move on to the gameplay part. Yeah, hope y'all aren't too bored or like <laughs> too fed up with me not being able to speak. But yeah, let's move on. Okay, now we're at the gameplay section. I'm just gonna teach you boys and girls, obviously, some key like little tricks that you can do with Scrapper to make the gameplay more fluid. Because um, many people say that Hammer is quite clunky to play with, but um, that is due to some aftercasts, pretty much like. For example, the auto text from Hammer have a long um, aftercast after each hit, which is pretty annoying. Or like being locked in the rocket charge animation can be insanely fucking yeah. um, hard to deal with at times because you're kind of locked in the animation and in where you're going, but that's only what you would think. Luckily, we can cancel animations. Um, for example, if we go for a rocket charge and we see that we have to change our positioning really fast, like if I would jump down there and I would see that people are coming and I really want to fall back to here. I was going for the rocket charge, going to my kit and yeah, pretty much by going into the kit and then storing my kit, I cancelled animation from the rocket charge. The rocket charge doesn't get interrupted by me going into the kit though. So we really have to drop the bundle and then the animation from rocket charge yeah, gets interrupted. And show it again. Now it's cancelled. Then you can pretty much fall back. Just cancelling this is insanely good for like staying on, um, on a note as well or like just going for a small for a small kiting spot pretty much. We would go onto this top of the roof there. We go here, cancel this. Yeah, it's pretty good. We could have easily jumped from there to here as well. But due to like in combat movement speed, a jump like this wouldn't mm, be as possible unless we like jump dodge or some yeah, other shit. But yeah, it's a good thing to know. Can work pretty good at times. So yeah, that's kind of fun. Next thing we have is um, Acid Bomb. It's a long fucking leap back. Now we can play around this pretty much. And let me show, let me show. Just gotta wait for the cooldown to come back. And that way we can make sure that our um, desired landing point is pretty much secured. We're just gonna drop the bundle and we can pretty much cancel the leap from um, Acid Bomb. Now we don't always have to be going for like kite spot with Acid Bomb. But due to the fact that this is insane DPS and we don't want to be, if we are standing on a node and we're fighting someone, we obviously don't want to um, lose the cap by leaping back here with Acid Bomb. If we just do an Acid Bomb, instantly cancel, like with the um, stock kit, we pretty much stay in the except, uh, exact same area, but we still get the damaging effect off, you know? And yeah, that's pretty insane. So, cast a skill, drop bundle, and it interrupts the animation. Yeah, that's pretty easy. But as I said, we can do some nice jumping tricks with this as well. Acid Bomb is insane for kiting. We can do nice stuff like this, for example. And yeah, people will have a hard time chasing us. No, kiting with NG or like Scrapper is insane fun. We can do so much shit. For example, no, no mind. <laughs> Normally you could be going up there if you time the um, story right. But yeah, there's just a lot of fun you can do with kiting. Another spot I'm gonna show you is pretty much this one. It takes some lineup to do, 
take some time to get used to. But <laughs> when you can actually do them, you can jump on top. <laughs> there is so much fun um, if you can actually pull these things off. You can go up here. It's insane. And that's why I love Elixir Gun. Um, yeah. That's pretty much the only stuff that I can show for like little tricks wise. We can do insane stuff like that. Um, the only other thing that I can show in combination with Rocket Charge is that normally the animation would bring us in a straight line moving downwards. We can go for um, a little trick that is doing the Rocket Charge while jumping though. So we kind of leap a bit, um, like, we go a bit higher and that pretty much enables us to move across gaps that wouldn't be normal within, uh, with the normal rocket charge, pretty much if I would cast it forward, it, we just go down here. Now, we could go over here with Acid Bomb, for example, but we could also go across with rocket charge the thing is there's a trick behind this um if you cast your auto attack and then during the swing of the hammer pretty much during the animation where the auto attack is actually being cast being casted we just go for a jump and then go for the rocket charge now this obviously didn't work <laughs> again but yeah you can trust me it works it really does. I'm just gonna... So yeah. Go for the auto attack animation. Jump. Rocket charge. Um, I got a video for that uploaded as well. There's some fun stuff you can do with like Hollow, for example, with the Sword 3 leap. Or even the Hollow 2 leap. And yeah, it's insane what you can do with this that most people won't be able to do because uh, you know how to do it. It's a big brain five head knowledge. But yeah, that's pretty much it for like gameplay tricks. Um, another thing you can do for more Condi cleanse uptime is you see that Healing Turret has a 30 second cooldown. Um, that is only when you uh, actually explode the healing turret though, like triggering the the explode and then getting the water finisher pretty much. Or using it as a finisher, as a blast finisher. If you just pick it up, it goes on a 25 second cooldown. It pretty much decreases the yeah, 30 seconds cooldown to 25. Pretty much gives you more uptime on Condi cleanses when you see that the enemy is running a Condi damage heavy build, then you can use this trick to get like more consistent or like more frequent Condi cleanse. Now it's on a 25 seconds cooldown. It's insane. Yeah. Obviously, um, utilizing your combo fields as an engineer is super important. When you stack them on top of each other, the oldest one will only get triggered. Like the oldest one that I placed was, or like the first one, was the water field. Then I put like blind, um, the light field, and the chill. Remember only the uh, yeah, oldest one gets uh, triggered. You can look it up on uh, wiki what combo finisher does what, but there's a lot of fun stuff you can do, and people who use it, uh, utilize it well, or like strippers who utilize Scrappers who utilize it well will get much more uh, yeah, value than the other scrapper they are facing, for example. Like, I could be blasting this and get area weak uh, weakness around me, which would pretty much prevent them from doing more damage. And I would have the upper hand in the duel from just that. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff to do. You know that you're. Uh, actual reflex projectiles. We could have used that to cast it and then cover our heal by still reflecting from the electro wall because it has like some after cast, even after finishing the cast. And this would pretty much give you the ability to safely cast your heal 
when there's a thief around, when there's a ranger around, when there's a mesmo of pistol around, who would try to shoot projectiles to actually interrupt the heal skill. So yeah, unless like someone, like a thief steals onto you, then you can't really cover your heal anyways. But yeah, this is a pretty good trick to actually get your heal off. Pork champ dude. Okay, now we're gonna review some gameplay. Um, this was pretty much a solo queue that I played. Or was it dual queue? I don't know. What it was doing the last um, 5 vs 5 season. Here we're playing versus uh, Misha on Holosmith and Ja on Holosmith. Both are 55, very good players. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good fucking match and I think it showcases the abilities from Scrapper pretty well. So, um, what do we do when we start off a match as a Scrapper? Because of the fact that we have lightning fields, we can pretty much put them down, thunderclap, or go for the function gyro, and then blast it with um, your acid bomb and the healing turret, which pretty much gives um, area swiftness. Yeah, makes it easier for our team to rotate to the nodes. And yeah, um, we're the scrapper. We're going for a duelist. And yeah, we're going to the side now. Pretty much capping close or going far is a really good move. We could also be going mid if we have another side nodder. But yeah, I'm pretty much confident in um, taking the side nodes. Because um, most Holosmith Holo players will push your close node. And yeah, that can be quite scary, but as a scrapper, you pretty much have the upper hand. Okay, let's see. What am I doing here? I'm just trying to get some damage in. I see that three people are behind me, I'm going to this kite spot, activated my stability, and it's gonna kite now. Pretty much they're unable to attack me here, due to the good kiting. I go to this little spot, like this um, yeah, area of stones, which pretty much makes it unable for the thief to steal on me, like it's a no point. I can just camp this, get a bit around. My Reaper came in, gets some good damage on the Thief, and I'm just gonna go for the Cleave here. Put some Field Stone um, to resustain me. And yeah, just watching the map, what's happening. Revenant died. We're just playing it safe here. I'm not going in too deep, because um, yeah, there are three people here we don't really want to be feeding. Here I'm just trying to get some, um, some peel for my Necro. Pressure the enemy hollows. It doesn't really work out. I get cleaved heavily. I have to instantly disengage. Here I uh, base the um, enemy ref with the function gyro to give me super speed so I can kite away. Now he is um, solo here. We can push the node now and pretty much just get the cap. Now I see that our guy died, we go for the function gyro with the um, defense field dress, so that uh, we get stability, and we block projectiles from coming in. Get the easy dress. Kinda watching what's happening on the map. I see that close is open now and our, rev uh, our necro is still there. I see that the holders are focusing me. I don't wanna really push to close now. Because there's a thief waiting as well. Our necro can't really peel for me, so I just go back to mid, try to kite to this choke point here, and try to outplay them by movement. Kiting up here, give myself super speed to kite, try to go for the acid bomb here. Sadly, I get almost one shot by the nades. But yeah, lucky to get my heal off, get some super speed because of the um, trade, and can now kite away safely. Reposition myself. Close is still unkept, so I'm gonna go for that. Interrupting um, Misha with the thunderclap here. And yeah, just getting the cap here. Yeah, 
kind of watching if someone's coming from beach. So nobody's decapping. Like moving a camera around to see what's happening is super important. Now I see that Riven is putting. Pretty much throwing him down with the glove shot, which um, applies triple to the enemy. I obeyed the uh, Dragon Elite. Get some nice damage on. Plant some condies. Get pulled by the X5, but yeah. I'm just playing it super safe. I don't really have to be DPSing right now. He has the heal up. Just playing it defensive. Now I see that the thief was coming in because of the shadow shot animation. Um, yeah. Now I activate the defense field to get stability. And I saw that my ref is coming, so I'm just gonna hold the note. Or like, I held the note pretty much. Get a nice evade here. Try to put poison down so he can't regenerate health as fast. Go for the function gyro damage. And yeah, rev is down. Just gonna leave the acid bomb on the body so he gets cleaved out a bit. And there would be no way that the thief could arrest that pretty much. I'm um, gonna go back for a second. I see that my Revenant is getting chased by um, a thief and a hollow. I'm healing him, uh, healing him up with uh, the healing shirt. And yeah, giving him super speed with the trade as well. Now we're pushing mid. They got a nice... Uh, thief got a nice burst on Misha. I'm just trying to predict where Misha went uh, and stuff. But fortunately he was dead already. No, I was jumping down. The thief left to the cap farm. And um, yeah, the enemy guardian got the rest. I was pretty aimless at this point, didn't really know what to do. And then decided to, uh, to go mid, to kind of um, contest the note. I think we managed to contest it. Get a good burst with Function Gyro. You can use it offensively as well. When your team is pretty much full life, and you see that you can pressure someone with Function Gyro, it does really, really good damage then it's very, very uh, viable to actually yeah, use it offensively. Now I'm just going close because I saw that it got decapped. Um, it's kind of a waste because we're pushing one hollow with three people. Uh, one of the refs realizes that, pushes away. Just trying to spam the hollow through the wall. Get stunned by the um, crate here. Now there's two hollows here. I instantly leave the node because they have a lot of pressure. Just going for uh, some resus then. Now that I see my rev is dying, I go for the function gyro, the um, stability from defense field, and I get the easy res. But yeah, my ref's gonna die again because he's breathing too hard for the note. I'm pretty much putting blind on and kiting away with an acid bomb. Just using line of sight so I don't get hit by the nades. Um, just trying to fake. Let me see. Just trying to um, fake push the node again because they didn't get the full cap yet. And Misha is trying to leave, so I just bait him and coming back. I'm just trying to waste the time as much as possible. Yeah. Now I saw that the um, hollow is moving towards me. I stun break, go for the blind on the node. See that they're both here again. Go for the interrupt, get super speed from that. And that's why the trade is insane. Like, um, super speed interrupt is busted. I'm just cutting away because it's like 3 versus 1 and close. I don't really want to fight that. Now I see that my Revenant is pushing the zone. Kinda coming back to like help out my Revenant here. To kind of make him survive. Trying to maybe get a sneaky decap so that the Guardian is moving back though, so no real point in going there. Putting the function gyro down to like keep the hollows busy, maybe go for a sneaky decap. Um, but yeah, acid bomb on hold for damage. I saw that Misha's coming now, instantly blocking and moving away. There's no point uh, in contesting the node. 
always be aware of your position because Nate Solo has insane busted damage. And yeah, rather go for helping out your teammates. What you can see what happened there. Um, they put the crate on. And I pretty much wanted to stun break my um, Revenant by throwing the Elixir U, which is a stun break. I'm just gonna close my window real quick. It's getting kinda too low in here. As I said, I'm going for the stun break here on my uh, on my ref. Waiting for his Elixir S, he's dodging after the Elixir S, I'm going for the Thunderclap, interrupting him. And yeah, then I'm killing him. Nothing special, I guess. Go, I went for the blind here, going for the stomp, they got the taunt on me. But we get the kill though. <sighs> Just capping the note here. Now I see that Misha is coming. Um, Gra is coming. I'm just gonna take this one versus one. Um, no. Stun broke. Blocked his burst. Thunderclap uh, interrupt to put weakness on him. Should have paid more attention to my dodges. Interrupt the holo leap with the function gyro. But yeah, now I almost got one shot by not dodging correctly. I blinded the supply crate though. And now Jar is leaving because he sees that he's getting plus one. I'm going for the Thunderclap to interrupt him, snap him down. Now two holos are coming for me. I should have kited back to the node for, to my refs, but I just get fucked by 15 poison stacks here. My team is trying to rest this, it's not a good call. Like, not a good call at all. You can't dress versus um, two nades alos. It just doesn't happen. Okay, I'm gonna respawn. Try to carry this team fight um, by resing, but I missed the function gyro. Um, going for the res here, but it doesn't work out. Just going back to the node here. I see that Misha is pushing me from the back. I was going for motor shots. Dodgy Corona burst. Block the sword 3. Evade the nades. Interrupt him. From the club. He's gonna leave now. Because he knows that he's not winning the one with one. Now I'm gonna rest my teammate. With Function Gyro and the stability. No, we're grazing the other teammate. My thief is gonna die now, I think. Yes, he does. I'm gonna try to go for the cleave here. But my thief is just getting... Uh, yeah, cleaved out. We get the counter kill on Jar here, I think. Yes, we do. And then we get the kill on Nisha as well. Now it's pretty much time for us to snowball. We got three kills on the map. I'm going for the node here to put us through with my uh, ref. Just drop some shit on the node so um, he doesn't get punished too hard. Now I see that my necro is coming up. I don't really have to be here anymore because those two will get to cap. I kind of watch what's happening on the map now. I'm watching Beach and I see that the Hollow Smith is coming out of base. He's pretty much going over close because he wants to win this node so they don't lose the game because we got mid as well. But my thief is only here, so I have to go um, to the node to actually do it. That's what I'm gonna do. And yeah, I see that two holos are coming. I'm pinging my team that they actually should come. I played super defensive here, just dodge preemptively. Um, stability up and reflect. And they can't really hurt us here. They have to kite immediately. Um, Conditive gets a good burst on uh, Misha. And yeah. We get a kill with Lich. Now I just have to uh, watch the so we don't get decapped by some random shit. Game is pretty much over at this point. Um, we're gonna get a beast as well. 
Oh, uh, Rev is doing a good job in kiting a mid. Actually insane. Oh, what a gamer. Yeah, and we can just AFK here. We got the beast. And it's GG. So yeah, was kind of a good showcasing of how to position ourselves, which fights to pick, when to rotate. Let's go to the next one. Okay, okay. So now we have the next match. Um, pretty much just giving my teammates uh, swiftness while going over the base. Pretty much the most simple thing to do in the beginning of a match. And yeah. Um, we're getting stealth now. We don't really have like a team fighting pump or a pump I want to team fight with in this match. So I'd rather push him too far because I see that my um, Reaper's always uh, or already pushing it. Pretty good for me to number that. And we're getting a really really quick kill here. And that's perfect. We got close now. Our team is kind of leaving mid. Um, and we got fun. Pretty much avoided the team fight. But I uh, was good, she decided to feed. <laughs> Nothing really happening here. Hope you guys are enjoying the music. And yeah, pretty much I see that the holo is respawning now. I can just camp this. The team is getting decapped on close because they're committing to the uh, team fight, which is pretty bad. But yeah. I'm just trying to avoid everything that the holo has. I'm getting plus now by... Uh, I think a thief? Yes. Oh. I'm just trying to auto attack him with um, Lex again. He kites away. I was watching out for their respawns if they had any, but I realized they didn't have any. Just trying to play it safe here. Yeah. Let's not get defeated because they have a thief as well. Kind of waiting for my teammates to do to do a push or something. Damaging the flash worm above. I'm going for the quick decap. Nobody sees it. And yeah, I'm just getting the rest on our guy now with the stability from the defense dome or defense field. I have no idea what the fuck it's called, but yeah. Going for the cap again. No, <laughs> don't really want to take the fight on that. Probably could have taken it, but it was way too risky. Versus that comp, definitely. Now I'm getting pushed by the Reaper. Never mind. <laughs> I actually forgot what the fuck happened in this game, like completely, but... No. Yeah. Just trying to keep my distance here, because we can just hold far. Um, we got close as well, so there's no need to like commit for middle node. I can just hold this one versus one. Play a bit defensive, uh, force cooldowns. Just spam more to auto attacks, because that's pretty much the best damage that we have. And you can't really kite away from that. Um, yeah, we pretty much won the fight. He's disengaging now. Necro comes in. I got my Dragon Hunter near me. And it's a pretty okay fight to take. Um, because I'm kind of supportive for DH. So yeah, we can create a lot of value by just supporting him. And doing the damage. And we force him to go away. Sadly, our skull is dead for the third time. Not quite sure. Now we get decap because we're a bit too greedy. But it's pretty much okay because we have like three guys in front now. Can just play it super defensive. Kiting away from the Lich. They are tunneling on me now. I get pretty lucky here. Um, Try to do the F1 combo field with the acid bomb to get um, a water finisher. But yeah. I should have kited away a bit. Um, getting find a code of card here. Block up. Cancel the hammer 3 so I don't uh, yeah, run into a random direction. And can use line of sight. I get super lucky here. By not getting farmed. But this is pretty much where I misplay. 
I'm running into the far node now where all the other like team members from that team are coming. I could have just run into flows and played safe, but yeah. You always have to be aware of where the enemy team is, obviously. So this is a pretty good showcase of how not to play the game, or how not to play Spearpa. Um, Now pretty much my Reaper dies for that, I think. We just close to the thief. And yeah. Pretty bad, pretty bad. Reaper's not dead yet, but he's on boat today. Teamfight is gonna be lost now. Um, I can just push far to like uh, help out my guardian. We're pretty much forcing three guys in far again. It's pretty good for us. Thief stole onto me. Can just play defensive here. Go across the, the, the gap with a massive bomb. Just trying to waste as much time from them as possible. Uh, no, our thief arrives. I think we get a kill here on the uh, fire brand. Yes, we do. Acid bomb on the drone body to get like, uh, AOE damage. And yeah, I think we get a kill on the hole as well. We do. Now I'm pretty much capping again. We got close safe. So there's like no need to actually commit for middle. But uh, we get decapped again by the thief. Skirt is dead again. Who would have thought? But yeah, enemy guardian is on respawn now. Um, you could see that she's going into middle from spawn. And I'm just trying to think what I can do here. Pushing a team fight um, to get the uh, cleave on the necro. And now I'm getting back to the node because the enemy hold on respawning. Yeah. I'm getting the necro and the hollow to me now. I'm waiting for my uh, team to come pretty much. Interrupt the sub 3 with flashbang. Getting weakness onto him by dazing him. Stability up to not get fucked by the rampage. And yeah, now I have to kite pretty much. I shouldn't be playing for the note here. And I. Uh, yeah. Correctly kite away. I get immobilized on my acid bomb. Um, Using the rocket charge to like disengage. And now I'm just trying to kite. Block up. I get chilled also, I have very little movement speed. Kiting the lid. Kinda getting stuck on terrain. To raw? I have no idea. Doing the acid bomb jumping puzzle to get onto a node. And pretty much disengage, saving him. Now my thief ported up and I get to rest. And yeah. I don't really want a team fight, as I said, so I'm just going for far here to get a quick decap. We probably could have team fighted in this match. That's kind of um, a thing I didn't consider, but um, just by the sheer enemy comp, like they have a firebrand, they have a core necro, they have a reaper, they have a hollow. I don't want to team fight that, even if it means that my skirt is um, yeah, feeding all game. But I can create more value by just uh, going to the nodes or like going to far node and keep people busy while the rest of my team is fighting them out no much. Now I'm just getting away. Still got two guys at far and we got a kill uh, on middle because of that. Because I like, held them busy pretty much. Um, Reaper dies. We can't uh, manage to get the cleave. And I pretty much have to disengage again. But just going for the super speed. I said bomb to. Uh, Get some movement. And yeah, going for the deep uh, decap again. And sadly, we get decapped on close. So, this is pretty much just um, not really uh, dueling gameplay, but pretty much how to rotate if you know that your team is going to lose in team fights. Now, I pretty much want to prevent them from getting the rest, but they actually do. Sadly, we have like four people at Fano, I think. No, he didn't kind of too much damage from the Reaper. He luckily falls off, and I'm just playing it defensively here. Don't really have the cooldowns, like, I have no stun break to even really fight the uh, Reaper, or if someone plus wants me. 
But uh, yeah, that's why I'm keeping my distance. My guardian came in. And we can just take D1 with this too. Acid bomb in the middle of the node. Function arrow offensively to get some damage in. And yeah, we had now three guys in far versus one guy, our thief pretty much misrotated instead of capping home or helping out our night close in the team fight. So yeah, kinda sketchy. Oh, the edge is playing it good though. Not gonna lie. Trying to kill the flesh worm. But um, Reaper's repushing me. I set a target onto him so I get a um, plus one. My DH is getting run down by two people now. And this is pretty much where I should be leaving. Um, I see that my teammate get farmed. I see that they are going to rotate to me. And I can just instantly use my mobility to get kite away and keep them busy again. I'm getting fucked by Lich though. I think he was playing the unblockable shot or some shit. And yeah. Now as they are leaving, I can push back into the node. But I didn't see that the Reaper um, came back, and now I get one shot, pretty much. Shows again that you have to be super aware of where the enemy team is moving, and what fights to push, and when to... kind of um, better take a step back, and regen your uh, cooldowns. Or regain your cooldowns, if... pretty bad word. But yeah, DH is farming the Reaper on the duel. Instantly goes to Kite when he sees that more people are coming. Um, he's 1 vs 2 on Farno. I trust him that he can Kite that. I'm gonna go for the decap on close now. We won the team fight. And yeah, interrupting the Hollow. I'm just trying to slam him down. Some people um, can chase him. Got the Necro behind me. Putting the chill down to so, like slam him again. And we get the kill. Pretty much put the acid bomb down to prevent their thief from getting a sneaky res. It's much better to leave him out in this position. Or like, let him bleed out a bit faster. And yeah, we're pretty much in a winning situation right now. We get to kill him middle again on the fire gun. And yeah. I'm actually gonna play defensive here. Waiting for the... Respawns where the thief is moving because I don't see him on the map. And just kind of waiting what happens. Thief is decapping close now. He wasn't stealth. He didn't see that fast enough. My necro is holding on to middle. I'm doing the perfect move. My team on fire is disengaging from the fight because they have respawns now. Pretty smart as well. And we pretty much win the game here. I can just AFK on close, do the hollow. And yeah. Trying to daze him over and over and over to get um, weakness on him. I kinda get fucked here by the uh, static shield. Interrupted the Corona burst with my function arrow, using it as an offensive tool. Blocking the Corona burst. Not staying in range to get hit by the second uh, hit of Corona Burst. But yeah, uh, I'm just getting mute by the Sinead now. It's not really that important though. Just standing on the node, trying to not get decapped. Heal turret for my Necro to support him. Function the rest, or at least attempting the rest. But he gets stomped. And yeah, kind of wasting my dodges here. Going for Mortar Cleave, Foundation Stone, Step Up, and yeah, and then we pretty much win the game. It's pretty much just showing you how to rotate if you don't trust your team to actually win teamfights, versus a comp that is heavily trying to teamfight your comp, just by being smarter than them, keeping them busy. Even if you're fucking it up sometimes, and the value that you create um, by just holding people busy by being one versus two and just kiting is insane and it's gonna pay out in the end if your team is not complete garbage so yeah the next match again going for the swiftness for my teammates 
I see that some boar on my team, the Condi Ref, is playing like a duelist, or pretty much he wants to go for um, the close node. And it's fine with me, I can just prefer the team fight now. Stealthing up Acid Bomb to like um, block stuff from my teammates. Going for the Fumigate now to reveal myself and pretty much make myself a target, or like kind of see where the enemy team is uh, moving. Predicting the Thunderclap here to snare down the Ranger. So some boy gets the full cap on close. And we're not stuck uh, stuck with an uncapped node. Going to the team fight now, put the bubble up to um, prevent the enemy lich from getting any value. Choking the super speed from F1 to kind of rotate. Um, some boar already died on lows. I think it was a one versus one. Not quite sure. And I think I even get the rest here. Do I? I think so, yeah. Keeping him alive, putting the blind down. Function very up, and yes, I get to this. Now I'm just trying to look um, to kind of bunker the note, support my power ref or like my country ref whenever he needs something. And yeah, putting step up to not get mean by the thief. I see that they're moving out of the fight now. My uh, fear breaker went to close to support, so I can go to middle to kind of help my reaper out. Putting blind on now to contest it better. Acid bomb down for DPS. And yeah, I'm just trying to see what I can do here by holding the note until my warrior comes back and he's on the note now. Trying to get the rest here, but he gets stomped out. We get decapped on close again, which is kinda unfortunate. Trying to kite around a bit with my warrior here. We are heavily outnumbered, actually. Now we're 2v2. But the thief should be around here somewhere. He went close though. Now I see that the Reaper's moving out. And yeah, I'm just trying to mirror some rotations. Um, I see that my Necro was on respawn, I thought he was going mid. But he wasn't. Um, and I'd rather go to plus close now. Because um, I saw that Sambo got one shot in the beginning, so I kind of don't trust him to perform as well in an outnumbered situation. But yeah, we got the cap back, just supporting him now. Uh, him now. Trying to jump to force him to leave, targeting him, so he knows that he should leave the fight. Because I'm better in the one versus one versus the ranger than he is. Um, because I can prevent getting knocked back. And yeah. Just waiting for his big cooldowns. Putting step up was kind of unnecessary with him. The duel for Scrap was actually hard favored into, um, into Ranger. Putting Reflect up. And he pretty much knows now that he can't do the decap me. He's still going for the fight though. Interrupting the mall with uh, my acid bomb and flashbang. When I'm uh, when I got the binding roots on me, I can go for my hammer three, which is pretty much an evade. Um, yeah, because I can't really dodge in when I'm immobilized. And yeah, not really that much happening in this duel. It's pretty uh, pretty much a hard counter for the ranger. Just playing it safe, and our team sadly got wiped without me in the teamfights. But that's a trade. Oh, look. That's something I'm okay with as long as we're holding on to close. There's no reason for me to push on the map now because I know that they will most likely rotate into close because they won the teamfight. And that's just the mentality of uh, most people in rank queues that they just push for the third node. And yeah, trying to play it safe. Waiting for the elite to do something. Acid bump in the middle of the node again. I'm blocking. Interrupt and blind the node. And yeah, just waiting for his next move. Put the heal up now, pick it up with F um, and don't blast it because I didn't need that much heal. And I want to have like more um, more uptime and consequence. Versus an ally because I didn't really figure out at the moment what the fuck he was running. But yeah. Block all of the uh, dazes and shit. Dodge the uh, knockback, 
Um, no. Now I eat a lot of burst. Can go for the Bulwark Gyro. You pretty much have to watch out that you have your Bulwark Gyro always in cooldown whenever you get lost. Now I get kinda lucky by kiting out. Um, Shuriken is gonna support me. That's pretty good for me. He can go to the teamfight now on farm. I'm replacing him with it. And yeah. I'm getting the res uh, resistance from my uh, uh, multi kit from the room. Just going for reflex here. Going for random dodges to predict. I got Bulwark Gyro up as well now, so it's kind of um, easy for me. I, I can just wait for him to do anything. Fancy the condense by uh, blasting the light fields. I'm going for interrupt now. Blind the node. Reflecting it in. I'm blocked out of his shit. And now I have my uh, my projectile destruction dome up again. You know what I mean. But yeah, this guy's wasting time. I see that three people are pushing me now, so I'm playing it kinda defensive. Healing back up now, popping the Bulwark Gyro. And we get a good burst on the neck here. He just went balls deep without any idea on what was going on. Um now what I'm doing is going too far, actually. To kind of help out my warrior because he doesn't want to be stuck in like some random duel. So I'm just replacing him into the Ranger, which is a favorite matchup for me. He even managed to keep the note. It's pretty good for me. And yeah. Now he could always or already move out. I'm just like jumping on the spot to actually kind of make him to leave. Or like force him to leave. Signal him to leave. Yeah, now I'm just waiting for respawns. I'm getting pushed by the Necro. You can see on the minimap that I pinged like um, on the far note, two people here. It's kind of a good usage of the minimap. Um, still trying to keep the note until my team arrives, but I see that nobody's moving, so I rather disengage because I have no cooldowns left. And yeah, in the meantime, we won close and we got middle saved. So yeah, not really that much happening right now. We won close. Got two clears on the map. And yeah. Pretty much what we learned from this game. Always try to replace your teammates when they're stuck in weird duels, especially your support. Um, if you see that your teammate is feeding on in a certain matchup, try to replace them. And yeah. Trying to go for the function gyro rest here. And I even get it. Script is busted by the way. Giving super speed with the heal to my teammate. Spamming some mortar shots into the node um, in the middle to kind of support my warrior. I'm going back to support my, um, my necro now. And I'm pretty much just cleaving out the alley to really my teammate. Now we have like four guys in close. Um, warrior died in the middle sadly to uh, one versus two. But it's kind of okay. We managed to secure one fight. And I even get the rest in mid onto the um, warrior now. And yeah, Scripper is insane with the reses. But you have to make sure that you have your function gyro plus the defense dome that gives stability up. Because otherwise if your gyro gets interrupted you're just gonna yeah, have zero fucking value from it. And yeah, not much happening anymore in this game. Just trying to stay the team fight now. Trying to support Shuriken here as much as I can. We're one with three middle now. Trying to keep my distance. Bulwark Gyro for him. Um, healing for him with our heal. Or like resustaining him. Shuriken is going for a big fucking kite spot that I showed him now. And I'm just swimming, you know, my bullshit again to prevent them from killing him. So, yeah. using your mortar defensively to like help your teammates is. And definitely worth always make sure to keep on to your blind field to your chill field and the water field for example as well so you can actually help out your teammates when they're struggling 
you shouldn't really use them for like damage anyways. Like the only thing that should be damage or like offensively used in um, Mortal Kit should be the auto attack and the number two because poison obviously is good for offensive gameplay. Yeah, prevents that from healing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the guide though. Um, if there's gonna be anything else, I'm gonna put it after this video. But yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so, first of all, thanks for watching. Um, I got like a holo guide coming up, I got a core NG guide coming up. Will take a week or two though, because I'm gonna be on vacation soon. And yeah, if you watch this till the end, and um, I don't know, write into the comments that uh, Scrapper is busted, I guess. But yeah, I hope you have a lot of uh, fun playing Scrapper in PvP, especially in the next 5 vs 5 season. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> follow my Instagram, follow my Twitch, sub to my Twitch if you like the uh, if you like the content. Modern. See ya, boys.